Everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. This is a rapid reaction brought to you by Buyers Auto. Again, as Broom will say here in a couple seconds, I'm sure, what are we reacting to? Uh, nothing. Uh, that's Jeremy Birmingham and Spencer Holbrook joining me uh, on a Sunday afternoon after the Big Ten presidents and chancellors met. Uh, it was the second day this weekend that the return to play task force in the league made a uh, presentation on the health and safety protocols, talked about the schedule. Uh, that they might put out a kickoff date, which is targeted at October 17th, and dealt with some of the uh, logistics with the broadcast partners. There was an anticipation that the yes votes were there and that a head count, a final head count could be taken uh, on Sunday. Didn't turn out to be the case. Now, that was also told to us that this could spill over into Monday, perhaps even Tuesday, uh, as the presidents and chancellors go back to their respective institutions, talk to their athletic directors, talk to their medical team, make sure that they're fully comfortable with October 17th, make sure that nobody wants to opt out, which is possible for a couple schools. Uh, but removing that barrier, uh, that teams could opt out and the Big Ten could, could proceed, uh, was one of the biggest uh, steps forward for the Big Ten to actually play this year. Uh, and it also removed a big bargaining chip uh, from one powerhouse team, uh, a, a rival of a team that we cover, perhaps, that uh, had used as leverage. So, Berm, I know you're frustrated. We all are. Um, but – it seems like we're on the brink here of October 17th. Yeah, I mean, after everything that's happened in the last few weeks, to have this second meeting of the weekend be over and still be a positive thing is a good thing. Like, it could have been much different. Initially, when we talked about this on Friday, we thought if this goes to Monday, it's likely not a good thing, but that's maybe not the case uh, as it stands. And if really the holdup here from a, an actual vote is just getting back and speaking to athletic directors and medical personnel as we believe it is, then Monday should be a good day for, for folks around the Big Ten. Yeah, I think, you know, as we've tried to piece all this together and, you know, we're talking to, you know, some people at different schools, but it's still just a small piece of the puzzle. Uh, as I've said with Spencer before, you know, you're talking about 14 coaches of programs, 14 athletic directors and 14 presidents. So, there are going to be varying opinions here. And as we talked about that on Friday, it was like, well, the longer this goes, the worse it is. But I think in this case, where both days this weekend were described as positive, teams could have easily said no on Sunday night and that the proposal was not good enough. But in instead, the perception is, okay, they've got the information. Now make sure that you have everything perhaps ready to go when you say yes. Yeah, it's like when the car dealership sends you home with the car you're going to buy. I'm like, hey, why don't you just spend the night and, and take, <laughs> take, it, take it home with you and then bring it back tomorrow. We'll finalize everything. I think that's what this is about. You know, they, they're just making sure that everybody's 100% on board. If they're not, there's, there, there could be an opt-out. You know, this is the time when you're going to officially nail down whether you're in or you're out, if you're voting yes, and then you opt out, or if you're just going to plainly vote no. So I think uh, in this case, it's a good thing because they – have all of the plans. They get one more night just to say like, okay, this is, we're going to get everybody on the same page at our school so that everybody in the big 10 is officially on the same page for the first time since August 11th. And I think that is a good thing because if as much, uh, you know, division as we've seen in this conference, uh, if everybody's on the same page for once, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah I, I don't care if everyone's on the same page part, pardon me. I, I don't mean to butt in uh, uh, I don't care. There has to be nine teams that are willing to play. The other five can piss off. I mean, that's the way <laughs> I see it. You need an eight-week schedule. If, if, if five teams don't want to play, despite the fact that, you know, Central Arkansas can play every week and have no problems, then good riddance to bad rubbish as far as I see it. Like, I think we're, we're, uh, we're seeing that the Big Ten has some teams that matter and some that don't. And uh, the teams that matter are going to play. Yeah, and I think that when it, when it comes down to it, part of this that Spencer is absolutely right about taking it off the lot and having, you know, 24, hopefully not 48, but a couple of days to think about your decision because it is a big one, even though we've talked about it dating back to August, that delay was the easy, obvious, and correct call. Um, it, this is also a reminder that the academic side, that the presidents, the chancellors, are obviously working on a different time frame and with a different sense of urgency. Within about two seconds of our story on Sunday evening posting, one Big Ten assistant coach was calling me directly saying, what the hell is going on? We need an answer. There were teams in the league that were getting ready 
to have full training camp practices, thinking that October 17th was the day today. That's on hold. But again, now that's the athletic side. And you understand why they want to plan because Ohio State, uh, Penn State, uh, Wisconsin, they have great teams that believe that they could play in the college football playoff. They don't want to miss that chance. So that urgency from those schools, we know that that, that already exists because those are programs that uh, – football programs where the academic side are more aligned. They understand what's going on there. And there's clearly been a division – I'm not breaking any news at this point that Michigan, when Jim Harbaugh is publicly talking about not being able to get in communication with his president, that there's been a disconnect there. Uh, about what you can and what you need to do as soon as possible. There's still been a full month since the, pl- since the plug was pulled on the season initially. So the question that comes from the football coaches who plan every day, all day, 365 days a year is, what have you been doing? Why didn't you know what date you might kick off? Why didn't you know what day you might be playing or what television windows you need to fill if they're different than normal? Now, a lot of those things do exist. And – if you would think over a 48-hour window over the weekend where you meet uh, beyond a, you know, a Friday at 3 o'clock where you're punching the clock and heading home, that you could have hammered all that out. But I, I guess I see both sides of it. But just from us on the athletic side and the people that we deal with more, much more frequently, you understand why they're so frustrated. Yeah, we knew, again, five weeks ago, that this, the, the right decision then was to just post, postpone, right? That was the obvious choice, and the Big Ten flubbed that. They should be getting ready to start their first game in two weeks like the SEC is doing. Instead, now we're talking about another four weeks potentially. But what you're talking about is schools like Ohio State. We already saw the Wyatt Davis decision on Friday. And now that's potentially up in the air if there's ways to, you know, rescind a contract agreement. I don't know. Uh, we, we're expecting other news on that front this weekend by uh, certain players at Ohio State. That hasn't happened because – all of a sudden, these players are now once again being told, hey, give us, give us another day. Give us another day. The coaches at Ohio State, the athletic side, is, is pulling their hair out going, how can we keep telling these players, hold off, hold off, hold off, when we've had seven months to prepare for this and nothing has been done? So that's where the frustration comes in. It's not necessarily that, hey, we we're, we're have to wait uh, 24 more hours because in the big, in the big picture, that would seem okay. Uh, but it's the little things that these constant conversations are saying, okay, guys, we're really sorry, but we got to just give us one more day, one more day, because these kids have decisions to make. Yeah. And, and everybody needs to move on with that. I think the best decision though, that has been made, or at least appears to be made berm is that uh, our chances of having our bold predictions on Friday are probably going to come through or at least have a much better shot. Whereas Spencer went out there and predicted January season. And I think that he, uh, thank goodness, is going to be wrong. I am 100% happy to be wrong. I, <laughs> I know you are. I was, I was expecting the worst and hoping for the best. And, and I said at the end of it, at the end of that bold prediction, if anything better than January or November happens, we can all be pleasantly surprised together. Well, guess what? We're all going to be pleasantly surprised together. How, how You're nice so stupid, Spencer. I know. I hey, really it, am. Partly it's my fault because I said, hey, These are bold predictions. We never hold anybody accountable if they're wrong. The point is to use a little bit of the insight and really go out on a limb. And nobody had taken January, so Spencer jumped on that grenade. But I instantly rescinded my own uh, willingness to not criticize him just for the fun of it. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious that he deserved it at this point. I will take all of the criticism imaginable as long as we get October football. It's yeah, good, I mean, at this point, at this point, Spencer's not wrong. So I guess we can, uh, you know, that's lo- true. put ourselves throw, throw ourselves on a grenade if it ends up being uh, overturned in the next twenty four hours. That's true. If I if, if I wind up having to eat my words on that one, I'm going to have a lot of problems, and I'm probably going to need a new laptop because I'll throw mine out the window. Uh, but it looks like I should be okay. Uh, everything still appears on track for October seventeenth. This is not uh, finite, uh, definitive yet from the Big Ten. But they met twice over the weekend, once with a smaller group of presidents and chancellors and the return to play task force. The entire group met on Sunday evening, but they've not voted yet. Uh, it has not been scheduled yet, to the best of our knowledge and our Letterman Road sources, but should be coming uh, in the next day or two. And then hopefully after that, training camp can begin for the Buckeyes and the rest of the Big Ten. Uh, and then we'll get to have a rapid reaction where we're actually talking about some, uh, some football again 
And I personally can't wait for that. That's Jeremy Birmingham and Spencer Holbrook joining me on Rapid Reaction, brought to you by Byers Auto. I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time.